we're teaching a really systematic procedure that people can use on three statement models that aren't balancing to make sure that they balance like every time. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of What's New at CFI. Today, I'm joined by my wonderful colleague, Duncan McKean, who everyone is probably very familiar with. He's one of my personal favorite instructors. Um, and it's funny, I could say welcome, but it's very strange because I see you all the time. <laughs> totally. Thank you, Mian. That's very kind. So today we are talking about um, we're three statement modeling, but we're talking about it from the perspective of FPNA. We're talking about one of our latest courses, FPNA Professional Three Statement Modeling. Now, three statement modeling is probably one of the um, the skills that I think bring the most students and learners to our um, to CFI. I think between just generally learning about investment banking, you know, like DCF modeling. LVO modeling, three statement financial modeling, like those are the key drivers, I think, of foot traffic of new users to the website. Um, but let's talk about what we're doing differently in this course today. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, the, I think you definitely, that's a true statement. It, it drives a lot of traffic. And um, I think it makes sense that it drives traffic just because three statement model, three statement modeling, and this is something you would probably agree with me on is that it's something that just tons of people struggle with for sure. They either have built a model themselves and it doesn't quite balance, or um, they've opened a model that's already been built. It's on the drive somewhere and maybe it doesn't balance when they open it. Um, so it's really common for people to struggle with it. So that's why we thought um, it definitely should be something that should be in the core of the FPNA um, program for sure. And uh, yeah. And so with the three statement modeling, we have we have another course that is more directed to kind of like the investment banking career path. Um, what are some highlights that you think are different that make the courses unique from each other? And should someone yeah. that's already taken the other one take this one as well? Oh, so two great questions. Um, the first one about like what makes this one different is that. It is the course is taught on a monthly FPNA model that forecasts out for 24 months. And so, as you can imagine, you know, given that it's hard enough to understand and balance three statement models, it becomes even harder when you're dealing with a model where there's like, you know, 24 columns forecasting out into the future. And then this model is also fairly complex and that is deep, like there's a lot of rows. And so, um, that's that's what makes it unique and different from the other three statement modeling courses that we've done. And then um, I guess the other thing you asked about it was, should somebody do both courses? Like if they've already done the other three, three statement course, I think that this particular course, part of the reason we're really proud of it, I think it does a really, really great job at teaching people like really deep to really deeply understand how three statement models um, work. And one of the core things that we focus on is the relationship between the cash flow statement and the balance sheet. And you would know, of course, like if, if you add a certain line item onto, let's say you add like property, plant and equipment onto the balance sheet. Um, well, then you need to know what the corresponding line items are that should be on the cash flow statement, um, namely like CapEx and depreciation in order to get things to balance. And so we really focus on that relationship between those two statements. And then um, throughout the course, we're always encouraging the learners to like make sure that if they put one line item onto one statement, make sure they put all the corresponding line items onto the other statement so that things are always balancing. Because sometimes um, the reason that models won't balance is because they've added one line item, in, one line on, a line item into one statement but they forgot to add it into the other statements. So it will never balance until they add that line item in. Um, yeah. And then just out of curiosity, um, what is the industry of the company that you, we use in this course for the three statement model? Mm, it's a great question. It is a um, consulting company. I don't know if we are specific on what services they were offering, but it's it's effectively a consulting company. And anyone that's been through 
there's a series of seven courses um, in the FPNA program that already use a model which is very similar to this one. And, and what we did was we, we took that model from the seven courses and we just adapted it um, to add in a balance sheet and add in an, a number of different line items um, to make sure it would work as a three statement modeling course. One of the things that's really, really neat about this course is we're teaching um, a really systematic procedure that people can use on three statement models that aren't balancing to make sure that they balance like every time. So we teach them to like zero out the starting um, the starting period balance sheet. So and um, basically get it to a point where it's balanced and then add line items sequentially and bring it back to balance every single time they're adding sort of groups of line items into it. And I think it really forces people, people will come out of the course with like a really deep understanding of the relationship between the cash flow statement and the balance sheet. And I think they'll also come out of the course with a, you know, a totally like well thought out procedure that they can use and apply to any three statement model that they're struggling with. Yeah, because this is a skill that is so useful, not just whether you're when you're an FPNA, but it is a repeated skill generally working in finance. If you're ever going to be doing any sort of financial modeling, whether you do it yourself or you're ordering someone else's model. Um, but the reason why I asked about industry was because I think and that's going to be a little preview for those listening is that um, we're working. I'm currently working on an economics for FPNA course, and I find that especially when we learn about like three statement models or just anything kind of like financial statement related, you also get the opportunity to also understand the industry at the same time that mm -hmm. you're learning that skill. Um, oil and gas is a popular one to learn about. I think um, I'm not sure why, but like I find that a lot of people, um, especially kind of out of the university. Uh, stream seem to be interested in oil and gas lately, but um, it's uh, sometimes it's difficult to learn the industry because it doesn't have necessarily the most tangible products. Um, so that adds a layer of whether you could you could kind of see it as it's it's more of a challenge or another learning opportunity opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're interested, particularly in learning about a specific industry, and we happen to have that three statement model be a company that's related to that space that you're interested in, um, then you're also learning kind of like the operational, um, the, what's the right word for it? Like the operational the nuances of that sector. Is that what you yeah. used to? Yeah. Yeah. Cause then you see like all the line items in their financial statements and you could kind of see the workings of the company. Yeah, totally. And I will say for the people that are listening that this particular course is really, it, it is taught on a, um, modeling a company that's providing um, financial services or consulting services, but it literally could be any type of company. Um, it, do, it really doesn't matter. Like you'll come out of it, you'll understand three statement modeling, and you'll be able to apply that literally to any sector. There might be some slight differences in, um, in each sector, but um, I would say that like 90% of what's in this course would apply to any sector. And then if there's any kind of final takeaways, anything that um, you want to share with everyone that's listening that they might learn from this course, any any closing remarks before they dive in? Oh, sure. Yeah. Thanks, Mian. Um, yeah, definitely. There, the other thing that we teach in this course is um, we we will show everyone in the course how a balance sheet can be wired so that we'll always balance. Even if there's mistakes in the cash flow statement, in the balance sheet, it will always balance. But, um, you know, we sort of teach it with a warning that they should never under any circumstances do that. Um, it does feel great to have a balance sheet, which is always balanced. But the problem is, is that if you wire it up that way, you're essentially just overriding the natural error detection system that's that's inherent in the statements. And you're effectively saying, I know there's an error, but I'm just ignoring it, which is definitely not the right way to do it. So we show um, we show everyone how to do that essentially so that they can spot it if it's already there in any models and remove it and wire it up properly. Um, so, so that's something that I'm, um, I'm super happy is in the course so that, again, people can come away with a much deeper understanding and know what to avoid with models that they encounter. Ooh. So if any um, 
I'm going to say that honestly, that I think this is a course that I need to take because I remember the idea of having a three statement model balance was always so um, it was a little bit elusive. Uh, it would always and it would always kind of in, require taking everything apart to build it back again from like step one and then checking if for every like two steps I take to make sure that it balanced. But it's a skill that honestly, like even outside of three statement modeling, I think that everyone's going to take away a ton from and have it be something that they apply to any financial model. And so if you are looking for an opportunity to practice three statement modeling, always ensure that everything is got its balances and checks and the whole model balances. This is a great opportunity to learn that skill. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, we hope you enjoy this course. Um, but for now, we're going to say see you later. And that's been that for what's new at CFI today. So bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Mian. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications and productivity tools.